tour, but we do know that the Labor Department conducted its January jobs tally just about three weeks ago, right around the time that the coronavirus infections from Omicron were hitting their peak at more than 800,000 a day. Uh, Lee Gould, who's with the Economic Policy Institute, says that likely depressed employers' demand for workers, especially at in-person businesses like restaurants, and it also may have sidelined some people who otherwise would have been working. I would certainly be surprised if we don't see the fingerprints of the pandemic, this recent Omicron surge on job growth. Forecasters think employers probably added fewer jobs in January than the 199,000 that were added back in December. And it's possible the economy even lost jobs last month. If so, that would be the first monthly loss of jobs since the end of 2020 when we had another big spike in infections. Of course, that was before vaccines were widely available. Right. So if we do really see weak job growth in today's data or even a loss of jobs, explain what that means. It's not what you like to see. I mean, we're still almost 3.6 million jobs short of where we were before the pandemic. So we'd like to see, you know, pretty rapid job growth to help make that up. But we do know the Omicron wave has begun to fade already. You know, the spike was very sharp, but also fairly brief. And so the damage to the job market could be short-lived as well. Gould notes that daily infections have already fallen by more than half from where they were in the middle of last month. We see them coming down by the end of January. The question is then, how quickly will they come down? And that's a really a public health expert question. But you could see a recovery as early as February and certainly March, if we can start putting the pandemic behind us. We also know that employers still have a lot of jobs they would like to fill. Uh, there were almost 11 million job openings at the end of December. Some of those may have been put on hold during the Omicron wave, but they could unfreeze fairly quickly, and we could see stronger hiring in the months to come. Well, we'll talk more about that, because this has been a persistent issue, right? Employers looking around for the people they need to fill those jobs. Yeah, and that's been a, a challenge for employers. Millions of people left the workforce during the pandemic, and some of those people have been slow to return. Gould thinks we could see more people coming off the sidelines and re-entering the job market once the public health outlook improves. As it becomes safer and as fewer people are sick, they can participate more fully in the labor market, and we will see that return. And unfortunately, one of the byproducts of that will be as workers are less scarce, they may not have the same kind of leverage they had in the fall to be able to bid up their wages. Over the last year, employers have had to compete to get the workers they need, and in many cases, they've had to raise wages, offer better benefits, or both. Wages and salaries in December were up about 4.5% from the previous year, which is good. Unfortunately, it's not quite good enough to keep pace with inflation, which, as we know, is the highest it's been in, in nearly 40 years. On average, workers have lost purchasing power uh, in the last year, and that's why the Federal Reserve is under such mounting pressure to get inflation under control. And Pierre Scott Horsey, thank you. You're welcome. is NPR News. And this is WAMU 88.5. It's 8.49 on Friday. Thanks for listening to Morning Edition. Coming up at 9 o'clock, it's the BBC News Hour. I'm Paul Henley, host of BBC News Hour. Coming up today, we report on the opening of the Winter Olympics in Beijing against a dark backdrop of COVID, human rights concerns, and environmental issues. And we spend